Welcome back to DTEC. Tonight, we will be taking a look at two cars that were brought to me uh, that I checked out earlier in the day. The reason why I wanted to make this video and bring you guys along is to basically show you how important it is to try to verify a customer's complaint, especially when dealing with misfiring issues. And also the fact that I was not expecting what I was experiencing today. And in all actuality, today we had four come in for rough running, misfiring complaints. One was an Acura that ended up being a coil. The other one was an Audi S5 that it was a coil connector. So it basically was not sitting properly. Those two got fixed and gone. Next, I will be bringing you on the other two that came in that um, don't get to leave that quick. So... Uh, this one is a, I believe it's a 10 BMW, it's a 335 diesel, it's got the M57 uh, diesel uh, turbo engine, and it's here for a misfire complaint. Customer towed it over, told me that he needed an injector because it was doing the same thing that it, last time it got an injector and it was shaking, check engine, so on and so forth. So he was telling me that it needed an injector. Now, as I always do with misfires, the first step that most of the time I'll go to right away is a relative compression to decide whether we need to move forward or not with any further testing. So this being the diesel, I'll show you how I set these up and we'll get started with a relative compression and see what we have. Okay, so again, for relative compression testing, we are taking a look at all the cylinders in the engine and seeing if they are able to basically build the same amount of compression compared to one another based off an electrical measurement that we take off of the starter current draw. So I'll show you that. Obviously, here is the engine, the way that on these BMW diesels or other ones, I'd like to remove the fuel delivery to them. And this is the fuel pump control module. It's the electric fuel pump control module. The pump lives in the fuel tank, just like any other uh, pump. So I'll remove the power supply. This will inhibit the car from starting. We'll get a crank no start, and then we'll graph out our channels. Okay, so we are set up. We got the amp clamp for the starter draw. And on the diesels, we obviously don't have spark to use as a sink, but you can use the injector. Uh, those will fire kind of like a spark plug as far as timing and for being able to sink a cylinder. So I've got my injector one. Uh, synced and to show you how it runs I'm gonna plug the fuel pump back in uh, just so that I can be able to display to you guys how crappy it's running both sides spitting out a lot of smoke out of the exhaust and not sure if it's picking it up but there's a lot of there's a lot of shaking We're actually measuring the uh, which we can take a look at the injector um, and to show you, let's go ahead and right away. So, it actually, uh, 
All right, so here is the waveform. This is when we obviously first cranked it up. Let's see. Okay, so we'll go over to this portion where we were able to do crank no start. And not sure if you picked it up audibly, but it had a inconsistent cranking cadence sound. And we can clearly see it here that we've got a missing hump. All these humps on a relative compression are a display of electrical, basically, reference of compression buildup in the, each cylinder. And when you have one missing, that means you've got no compression. And this is a little difficult because this uh, strategy for the injector, um, not sure if it's because because it's misfiring or it is a cold start so um, if it is <laughs> this guy here we know we're synced on injector one it could be our number one cylinder that's down um, if this is the main sink then uh, we'd have to look at the firing order and see which one that is but right now for me and trying to verify and identify and see if we even need to go further or entertain an injector, so on and so forth. Um, and I actually have not even scanned it. So this is just why I'd like to do relative compression. Uh, if it's misfiring as bad as it is when I pull it in, again, I, I don't even run for the scanner. I hook up, test it. And that'll give me an idea of how much further I need to go. So again, 100% identifying the correct cylinder and differentiating that multi-strike on the injector. I don't think I'm going to go further because I really don't need to. I can go ahead and price out basically an engine and tell him what he's really going to need. And that way I can also move forward and bring in the next one and show you guys what that one is doing. And just to uh, sort of one more fulfillment of curiosity you can tell exactly where our loss of compression is going um, mind you this scaling is kind of backwards but you can clearly see the anomaly as far as what I'm talking about this green trace I know it's shooting down but that means positive pressure on this sensor scaling you can see that that's synced with the missing hump each time. It's repetitive in the crankcase pressure reading when that dead hole is apparent. So we can, one last dagger, 100% know that this is going to be not the top end to where possibly sell a cylinder head removal and do valve train work. This is a bigger more expensive cost because it's bottom end damage in the uh, cylinder block, possibly hole in the piston, crack piston land, so on and so forth. But we have a lower end mechanical issue problem at hand that uh, will basically deem a complete engine replacement.
okay? Clearly, hopefully, you'll be able to tell. Oh yeah, this one's shaking. Hopefully you're picking that up in the way it sounds. And then let's see if we get anything. So, same exact symptom. Uh, check engine light. And again, I am not going to scan this based off of what we got. We'll do the same exact thing and see if we need to move further. Now this one is a 2017. It's an E300, I believe. It's a two liter four cylinder and it was at the dealer. There is an invoice for an ignition coil in the passenger seat. And I don't know all exactly what was done. It was just told here told to check it out, see what it needs, and that's what I am going to do. All right, same test. Let's see what it does. All right, we've got a similar sounding cranking cadence and we clearly see a missing hump and it looks to be right above our sink so one three four two back to one cylinder one no compression And right off the bat, we can already tell we are having a similar picture as the diesel. So, look at that. Let's bring that down and correlate it. So, again, the more it travels down on this one, it means higher positive pressure. So, forgive me for if it's confusing since I'm doing this all without uh, making the channel to reverse it or whatever, that is the way it's going to show. But regardless of anything, again, high positive crankcase pressure during number one's top dead center uh, piston travel where it should build compression. We are losing it into the crankcase. All right, and so because this one is a regular spark ignition engine, I am able to remove the spark plug and coil assembly and take a look at the inside of the cylinder. And we're right up front, cylinder one. Uh, I did that off camera. Um, I just picked this up uh, this past weekend. We went to Super Saturday, and they had this um, on sale. I think it was a show special, but uh, regardless, um, this is a contact for you. This is the model I got. It is this one here. You can tell the difference in the uh, way that it articulates, but it is, yes, it is a articulating camera. It goes all the way, so that's pretty cool um, compared to others on the market. Um, so... I'll get you shot of all the pictures that I took with that and see what we find. Okay, so there you go. Uh, again, I, I wanted to just pick up the camera, bring you guys along. It was crazy to have four uh, same symptom running misfiring, shaking, check engine light flashing, so on and so forth. And the fact that people's perception sometimes comes off as, oh, it's just a quick, simple coil or injector, so on and so forth. Um, this is the importance of 
doing this very simple, quick, easy test. Once you get used to it, you can do it pretty quickly. It's very efficient. Gives you information on whether to go further or not. Two today, survived, got fixed, done and gone. The other two, not so lucky. They will be needing engine replacements. I will be getting with the customers, giving them the good and bad news. And as far as you guys, thank you for tagging along, watching. Hope that was at least some sort of informative and that uh, helps some of you out there. So with that, thank you again. Thanks for watching and that's it.